Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. This video is actually part one of a two-part little short series. Uh, this part would be how to get your leopard gecko used to you as in used to your presence and then the second one would be how to get your gecko used to being handled by you. So this obviously would come before handling and this is the first step you should take. I'm going to list a number of behaviors on your part that I have found success with that will get your gecko acclimated to you before you get into handling. So watch that video a second. It'll come out later after this one, probably if I upload this one on a Monday, that one will come out on a Wednesday or a Tuesday. And I will link it in the links below when it comes out for those who come to the video after the fact. And I will also include it at the end of this video after that video comes out. Hi Jackson. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started. So a lot of people get their geckos from a pet store or they'll get it from a breeder. A lot of times they're juveniles. The thing to know about juveniles is that they are notoriously eh with being handled because they are babies and they're very skittish. And if you're a first time leopard gecko owner, you're probably gonna be pretty skittish too when it comes to handling your leopard gecko because it's a little nerve wracking because it's a species you've never handled before. And if it's your first reptile, that's even more nerve wracking. Right, Jackson? He's standing here getting his butt scratched. <laughs> so the first couple things I wanna recommend are leaving it alone for the first couple weeks, aside from offering food. So leopard geckos and other reptiles, and pretty much pets in general, but reptiles in particular, can be really finicky in the first couple of weeks of their new home. They can be very shy, they can be not wanting to eat, and so I really recommend not trying to handle your gecko, not trying to move its enclosure around or change the design unless you find out something terribly wrong like you're using a loose substrate like sand. If your enclosure is fine and the gecko is fine, do not handle the gecko. Do not bother it, leave it alone. If you're allowing it to hunt or bowl feed in the enclosure, just allow that to happen regularly. Do not try to force feed your gecko if it doesn't eat in the first couple weeks. Do not try to tong feed your gecko if it does not eat in the first couple of weeks. It is very natural for a leopard gecko that's new to an environment to take some time to adjust to the smells, the sounds, the different lighting, the different sights, to your presence, and to the idea of being in the new home itself. In these couple of weeks that you'll be spending not handling your gecko and not bothering its enclosure, what you can do is walk around the enclosure, get the animal used to your movements and your sounds, the way you look, that sort of thing. Something I do, and this is kind of a little embarrassing, but I pretty much sing nonstop. Like, I don't know why, I just naturally always feel musically inclined. So I'm humming or I'm singing. And when I have a new animal, it's actually a really great way for them to get used to your voice is if you're humming or singing. Obviously you don't want to be belting, you know, like a crazy high soprano, <laughs> like driving your animals crazy. But if you're just singing softly around them, it can be very soothing, get them used to your voice. And also it's nice for you because you get to see your animal potentially react to your sight and your sounds. If you're not comfortable with singing, you can simply just sit outside of the enclosure and talk. And even if you don't wanna talk, you can just sit in the room, turn on some Netflix, and just get the animal used to the fact that you're going to be around its enclosure at a certain time of the day. So that's another thing. Pick a certain time of the day. Like if you have a leopard gecko, you'll probably want to feed it during the nighttime and that's probably when you'll want to engage with it. So don't wake it up during the day to hold it unless it's like an emergency or something. Like with our Aria, we have to wake her up every morning to give her her medication because she has to get it every 12 hours. But aside from that, I wouldn't uh, handle your leopard gecko during the day. I would wait until it's natural uh, day night cycle, you know, it's awake at night, so I would wait until that time. But when that time happens in that two week period of you not being able to uh, handle it, I would sit outside of its enclosure and talk or watch Netflix or sing or just have some light bodily movements. You know, if you have pets like dogs, I would encourage you to have them in the room with you just to get your animal used to the fact of what you look like, what your movements are, what your animal's movements are. For me, that's very easy because I have front opening enclosures, so they literally just see right out into everything and they're all pretty much body level so they will all see my movements like every time I walk in the room they'll see my dogs movements that sort of thing speaking of front opening enclosures that's something else I recommend and if you don't have a front opening enclosure now it's okay a lot of people don't take that into consideration in fact I didn't when I first had leopard geckos I was using 10 gallons which by the way I think are too small I hated having 10 gallons and I quickly upgraded both my leopard geckos at the time so I use gecko bookshelves which are my own design I'll include the link below if you're interested in something like this but they are front opening enclosures and the reason front opening 
happening is absolutely the best is because your leopard gecko can see you coming. So like if you have a 10 gallon, you're just reaching in from above. Imagine how horrifying that can be to an animal. And it's also hard to distinguish whether or not you're coming in for handling or whether you're coming in for feeding because both times you're just coming from above. So if you have a front opening enclosure, your gecko can see you coming, it can interact with you, you can watch it, you can have the door open and just like, you know, sit with it and talk to it and let it still be safe in its enclosure, but then the barrier of the door is out of the way and it's still a way to interact. This is also really easy when it comes time to introducing your hand, which is the next step. The one way you can get your gecko to be used to your hand is to simply put it in the enclosure. Now, if your gecko is a juvenile, it may think that you're offering food, it may be a little overexcited, it may try to nip at you. It's unlikely because most times geckos will just retreat if they're scared, but if it thinks that you're food, it might try to go for you. So don't like wiggle your fingers around like crazy or anything. Put your hand in there, allow it to smell you, allow it to associate your hand with you. If you want to tell your gecko that, hey, my hand is safe, what you can do is try to tongue feed, or you can simply offer the food by hand. So if you hold a mealworm in your fingers, you can offer it like that. If you have tongs, you can offer food like that. And it just really gets your gecko to associate you with food, and that is a positive behavioral technique. It's the same way you would really get any person or animal to like you or a child to like you. You want to give them some sort of reward to associate you with goodness. And so with a leopard gecko, that would be food. And so if you offer food with your hand, they're going to think your hand is good and they'll understand you as the food provider. So they like you. After the two weeks are over, especially if your animal is coming out to your presence, like if you notice that within those two weeks, if you see your gecko coming out to you pretty often, you might not have to wait the full two weeks, but two weeks is like the period of adjustment. Some geckos take longer, some geckos take less. It really just depends on your gecko. After this period of two weeks, or like I said, the window of whenever your gecko starts to actually come out and approach your hand, you can introduce some light hand touching. I must urge you not to just force your hand on the gecko, not to just snatch the gecko up, not to just grab it. That's very frightening and alarming and that's not how you want to continue your, your relationship with your gecko. You want to let them know that you are a safe person, that it is their choice to walk onto your hand and interact with you. So these light hand touches that you can introduce could just be a finger along the back. Try to avoid touching the gecko's tail because that can make them very skittish. Don't touch their legs. Just gently touch their back and if you see that they are jumpy or they start tail waving, just back off a little bit but you can still keep your hand in the enclosure. It will take some time for both you and your gecko to get used to these behaviors because you may be frightened <laughs> of your gecko, you know, like getting really snappy at you, maybe potentially making a noise or jumping or tail waving. Um, if you see any of these behaviors, they may frighten you, you may be afraid of being bitten, but I must urge you to not be apprehensive because if you're apprehensive, your animal will sense that um, apprehension and then they will respond in return negatively. So just, you know, be really calm, be really safe, let your gecko know that it still has its boundaries. So if you are approaching the animal and it moves away from you, don't keep pushing the boundaries. Just sit and remain and over time your gecko will become very adjusted to you, especially if you follow these like respectable behaviors, you know, not just snatching it up right away. The good thing is most leopard geckos, I would say like 99% of leopard geckos are easily handleable, especially like if you follow the process by which I just described. And if you watch the second video, that'll explain more obviously, but this one's just like I said, describing before you start actually holding, like picking up the gecko. A lot of geckos are really easily handleable and they're very personable. I mean, after a while, your gecko will literally just like come right out at you. Like some of my geckos, if I open the door, they'll try to come right out, they'll jump right out and I'll have to put my hand there to catch them because they're so accustomed to me. Now, granted, I've had some of these geckos for years. Most of the geckos that I've had experience with have been generally very easy to hand tame or were hand tameable pretty much from the get-go. Adult leopard geckos are easier this way unless they have like never been handled or they've been abused or like neglected, then they may have a negative favor with human interactions, but it's very easy to turn this around. There are some geckos who naturally are just very bitey and very uh, flighty. I have one of those, her name is Liana, but even as she's gotten older, she has stopped making noises and she has been easier to handle. So please don't feel like it's never gonna work out. Don't feel like you are doing something wrong if your leopard gecko is just taking a little while longer to come around to you. 
don't feel like, oh, maybe this gecko likes me better because really it just comes down to a matter of if your gecko feels safe or not. Some geckos just don't feel safe being handled and that's fine and you should respect that boundary and other geckos love being handled. So it really does depend on your individual gecko, but with any gecko you should try the behaviors I mentioned in this video just to make sure that you are taking every step possible to hand tame your leopard gecko. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure you watch part two. Check out the links below. I'll include part two down there, but I'll also include links to all my social media, Patreon, merchandise, and a donation link if you're interested in donating. I would really appreciate it. But that's all for this one. Subscribe, comment, like, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!